Mark weighed 325 pounds, and he and Sarah had lost a couple of friends from heart attacks recently. She became worried about Mark, and to make a long story short, she cut him off from sex for all but four times a year, unless he achieved weight loss goals. The four times were Valentine's Day, their anniversary, and both of their birthdays, Mark proceeded to lose a bunch of weight over a two-year period and cashed in on the extra sex along the way as step goals were met but was pretty much deprived of sex. He lost a huge amount of weight and got down to around 207 pounds, and at that point he wanted to quit. After all, he had lost 118 pounds, and it was just so tough when Mark said he wanted to quit. Sarah said no way. Buster, that is when she made her threat. The threat that inspired this story, if you quit, you will only be getting sex the four times a year. But I have sexual needs, so even though you will only be getting sex four times a year, I will have to get my needs taken care of somewhere else in the moment. After Sarah made that threat, she saw the foundation of her marriage shake. It started shaking when Mark's head snapped up and he looked her in the eyes with a look of total shock and confusion. She saw the foundation of her marriage crack as she saw the sadness sweep over him, and the hurt was evident in his eyes, all the result of what she had said. She saw the foundation of her marriage begin to crumble around her feet, as a sadness and hurt morphed into anger and disgust. She knew then and there that she had made a critical mistake. Sarah had pushed this man she loved dearly to the limits to fulfill her desires, that he'd lose all that weight. And then she had threatened to have sex with others to punish him for not meeting her goals. How could she be so stupid? How could she have done that to him? Mark was pissed. He said, I've busted my ass for two years to lose over 100 B to please you, Sarah. It has been difficult for me beyond belief. And during the time you have withheld sex from me as a tool to get me to go on. I did it all for you, Sarah, because I love you and wanted to please you now when I don't feel I can continue. You reward me by telling me that you will continue to cut me off and in fact get your needs met elsewhere by going out and cheating on me. You may not know it yet, Sarah, but you have just ruined our marriage. You have thrown the gorilla out into the middle of our home, and now I don't know if it will ever be caged again. You obviously have had thoughts of having sex with other men, or you couldn't have come up with your ultimatum so quickly. How do you expect me to trust you? Now, have you been having sex all along to meet your needs during this whole two years? Damn you, Sarah, damn you. I don't know what to believe anymore about our marriage, man. You have just ruined it. That is all I can say. Sarah said, Mark, I didn't mean it. I never would have had sex with someone else. Please, Mark, I didn't mean it. Mark just looked at her in disgust. And how am I supposed to really believe anything you say now? You seemed pretty serious a few minutes ago. Mark got up from the kitchen table and headed out the back door into the garage. I have to have some time to think. The tears started flowing down Sarah's face as she lost it. She sat there sobbing because she knew he was right. A seed of doubt had been planted in his mind, and it wasn't going to be easy to make it go away. Sometimes things are said without thinking, and that is what happened here. Sarah just didn't think how it would affect Mark. She was so proud of him for what he had accomplished, but she had gotten greedy and wanted more. She thought it was for me. He did so much for me already but I was greedy and wanted more, and now I am going to have to win back what I have lost. Mark rummaged around out in the garage for about an hour. There wasn't anything in particular that he was doing, just keeping his hands busy while he thought things through. Mark didn't really think his wife had cheated on him over the last two years, but he wasn't sure earlier in the day he would have been sure. But now after her comment, he just couldn't be sure anymore. He didn't know either if she would have cheated on him in the future earlier. He would have never believed it. But now he wasn't sure anymore. He said out loud, I need to find out. Mark walked back in the house. Sarah was still sitting at the kitchen table looking like hell. Her eyes were red from crying and her, her nose was red too. Mark noticed and felt bad, but he was determined to follow through on what he had decided. Sarah, here is what is going to happen. I am quitting the diet right now. You don't need to worry about cutting me off from sex with you because I am cutting you off. We can have sex the same four times a year that you dictated before. If you want, if you want to skip it all together, that is fine too. I don't care. You do what you have to do. Let me tell you, however, that if you choose to have sex with someone other than me, you won't like the results when I find out and I will find out your lover will have his balls kicked up into his ass and stomped into pulp. 
I am sure I will be breaking a few of his ribs, and for sure his nose, I am certain that his eyes will be swollen shut before I am done, so he won't be looking lovingly on you in the future. And depending on how I am feeling at the time, it might even be worse as for you if you cheat on me, I will kick your bum to the curb so fast you won't know what hit you. You will be a free woman able to get your needs met any time and any place you want. I would never stay married to, to a cheating 304, so make your own bed there, sweetheart, and just, so you know I'm going to be watching your every move from here on forward. I don't trust you anymore, so you had better be really careful in everything you do. You won't be able to be careful enough, though, to keep me from finding out if you cheat. I'm going out for a while, I won't be home for lunch, but I will be here for dinner if you don't feel like cooking, that is okay. We can order a pizza or some Chinese takeout if you don't cook. Mark grabbed his car keys off the counter and walked out the back door into the garage. Moments later, Sarah heard the garage door open and she heard Mark's car drive away. Sarah said out loud, Oh my God, I can't believe this. How could I be so stupid? She began sobbing again and just sat there wishing she had kept her mouth shut. An hour or so later, she got up to go to the bathroom, then went and lay on her bed and cried some more when Mark arrived home later that afternoon. He found her in the exact same position, like so many husbands who suspected his wife of cheating. Mark decided to do some detective work work on his own. He thought the easiest way to start was to drive to the telephone providers and request a printout of call logs on their home phone and on his wife's cell phone both were in his name, so he knew he would not be having any trouble getting the reports. The landline phone company told him he could have it electronically, and they were able to upload the call logs for the last three years onto a CD for him for a small fee. He gladly paid it and walked out of the office with everything he asked for. Yes, he requested three years because he wanted to be able to go back before he had started the diet to see if there had been any motivation for Sarah cutting him off in the first place. Next, he went to the cell phone company and requested identical data. They hesitated at first, since it was his wife's cell phone number he wanted the data for. But Mark pointed out that indeed it was a joint account with his name prominently on the records, so they had no reason to withhold any information he might request. They offered the data electronically as well for a fee of $1.20. Mark thought it excessive, but probably worth the money, so he could more easily access the information. He did make a note, though, that perhaps he would rethink his cell phone provider in the future, arriving at home around 4 p.m. Mark saw Sarah laying on their bed sound asleep. He decided to let her sleep and went back to their home office, locking the office door so he would not be interrupted. He sat down at the computer and downloaded all of the data from the two CDs into a folder in his documents file he had already formulated how he would conduct his search he was going to start with two years ago and compile a list of every telephone number called in that first month when he started his diet and when Sarah had restricted his sex to four times a year, plus rewards for goals achieved that would have been September of 2008 on their home phone. September had 96 calls to 19 different numbers. He found that using the format the phone company had provided for him, he could sort the data in a number of different ways, so he created a list by numberers showing the number, the date, the time, and the duration of the call. Once he got the system figured out, it took him about an hour and to have to create that list for every call made from their home phone in the last two years. He was just about ready to start the same process on Sarah's cell phone data when he heard the office door knob rattle. The door was locked so no one could come in, so he saved everything he had been doing and stashed away all evidence of what he had been doing. He logged off the computer and went and opened the door to find the most pitiful sight he could imagine there. Stood Sarah, in a seriously disheveled state hair, a mess, eyes and nose red from her crying and sniffling every once in a while while she had her head bent down and only reluctantly looked up and into Mark's eyes, she said, Mark. I am so sorry for what I have done to you. I know you were hurt and angry with me, and I know I was selfish and cruel to do and say what I have to you. Please forgive me. I know you had accomplished wonderful results on your diet, and I should have had no say in whether you continued or not. It was for you to decide, but I guess I just felt the power of it all and got carried away. Please, please forgive me. Mark replied, Sarah, I forgive you for now, but only because I know nothing more. I love you and I lost all of the weight I did for you. I struggled with it for two years and gave up the sex during the time, all for you in the first place. I just couldn't do it anymore. 
Unfortunately, as I said, the gorilla is in the room now, and I have to know without a doubt whether or not you are a cheater or it will drive me crazy. So if you have not cheated on me in the past and do not cheat on me in the future, we should be okay. But I have to know, so until I feel confident you are just is going to have to deal with it. I didn't create this mess you did with your quick comment and threat. I can't imagine how you thought I might react to that, but obviously you never considered how it would make me feel or how it would damage my trust in you. Or you wouldn't have said what you did. Sarah was hoping Mark would just forgive her and forget what she had said, but that was not to be. She thought I suppose I deserved everything that was happening to me, but I hoped it could all go away. She nodded her head slowly in resigned agreement and turned and walked actively back to the bedroom and closed the door behind her. She lay on her bed again, not sobbing, but with tears streaking her face. Mark opened the bedroom door and asked Sarah, Do you want something to eat? Sarah said no. Mark, I am not hungry. Mark walked out to his car and drove off again to a place nearby called Grisham. He and Sarah had gone there for drinks many times, and their food was excellent. He knew he could have a few beers and a greasy but delicious bacon cheeseburger in the two years previous. He had not had more than two beers in a week's time, and not one bacon cheeseburger tonight. He was going to give in and have what he wanted. He knew that he would never allow himself to get overweight like he had been before. But tonight he was going to splurge and enjoy his dinner even though his heart was breaking. It was breaking for his wife because he hated seeing her like she was now, but it was also breaking from the hurt and distrust she had laid upon him. When he got home, he went back to the office and began working on the call log from Sarah's cell phone because he already knew the drill. It was easier to finish the cell phone list, and he was done in half the time. After reviewing the two lists, Mark determined that over the course of two years, they had 3,482 calls made in total from a total of 45 different telephone numbers. He decided to sort the calls by telephone number and had some surprising results. There were almost 300 calls to his cell phone, about 200 calls to his parents' number, and a similar numbers of calls to Sarah's parents' number. There were close to that many to each of Sarah's sisters, and about half that number to his brother John. In addition, there was a scattering of calls to various friends whom Mark recognized the numbers, and a few to other numbers he didn't recognize going down the list, though he discovered that there were over 200 calls to a number he didn't recognize, and another 50-plus calls to a second number he didn't recognize. Then he realized there were some calls 30 or more to additional numbers that were made over the course of two years. He assumed those might be hair salons, stores, church, etc., none of. Those statistics bothered Mark much, so he just noted them and went back to the two major unrecognizable numbers being the type of guy Mark was. He decided to refine his research a little more and sorted the calls by day and time for those two numbers. The surprising results gave him the chills, and almost immediately, he was burning up with suspicion and anger. Every Wednesday at 11 a.m., Mark went to a staff meeting with his boss and other department heads to a local restaurant with meeting rooms they met in conference for an hour, took a one-hour lunch break, and finished their business by 2.30 p.m. or 300 p.m. without fail. Every week, there was a call to him on his cell phone at 10.55 a.m. every week he worked. Yes, there were some weeks that were missed, and Mark instantly knew it was when he was on vacation. But every Wednesday at 10.55 a.m. was the rule. At 11.05 a.m. every Wednesday, there was a call made to the first of the two numbers Mark didn't recognize. Oh yeah, he was burning up now too much of a coincidence to not be suspicious. He knew at that moment that what he was going to find would not make him too happy persevering. He looked at the second number and quickly realized that those calls were all placed on Friday at 1.05 p.m. One Friday afternoon a month, Mark played golf with his brother and each of their best friends. They played 18 holes, which took them until about 5.30 p.m. and stopped in the clubhouse for a couple of drinks before heading home. He was almost always home before 6.30 p.m. On those Fridays, he would shower and take Sarah out to eat. What pissed him off was that Sarah always called him just before he teed off to tell him she loved him and that she would be waiting for him when he finished his round and got home. He knew what was going on now. But as yet, he didn't have visual proof or know with whom she was cheating on him with the scary part now is that he wondered how long it had gone on. 
and if it just started when Sarah cut him off or if it had started sooner. So he went back the additional year and discovered that the same calls were made once a month for the three months prior to his being cut off. Whatever Sarah was doing, she was doing it for three months earlier. But not as often all he had to do now was figure out who and then decide what he was going to do about it. He thought finding out who would be easy. He ran a reverse lookup on the first number and discovered that it was a cell phone number and not listed. He ran the reverse lookup on the second number and found that it was listed to a Tony Bali. Of course, Mark knew exactly who Tony Bali was. He was Mark's trainer at the gym Sarah had found him for Mark in the first place. So Sarah was calling Tony on the Fridays when I golf Mark thought he noted the address in his call log spreadsheet and decided to go out again for a while. When he got back to Gams, he sat and had a couple of more beers when things began to quiet down a bit after the dinner rush. Mark asked the rather attractive bartender Brenda if she would do something to help him. He explained a little bit about what happened and told her he just wanted to find out if the first number was Tony's cell phone number. He dialed the number and told Brenda just asked to speak with Tony, and if it is him, just tell him some woman gave you the number as a possible trainer. He told her if it is him, tell him that if he has openings, you will stop and see him at the gym one of these days. Brenda took the phone. Hello, is this Tony? She asked. Oh, my name is Jennifer. Yes, some woman who came into my hair salon gave me your name as a possible trainer. No, I didn't know her at all, but we were talking about getting in better shape, and she gave me your name laughingly. Yes, I am 24. I am 5, 6 in tall, and right now I am a little chunky. I weigh about 130 pounds. I almost feel like you're checking me out over the phone. I know I could tone up a bit and be happier than I am now if I was at 115 or so. But I do look okay, thank you very much. Do you have any openings? Oh, I see one of your clients has recently decided to call it quits, and you have an opening. Great, I will stop and to see you in a couple of days, and we can work out what I need to do to get the job done. Thanks, Tony. I will see you soon. Mark was sitting there in amazement at what Brenda just did. She verified that it was Tony from the gym and discovered that indeed he did hit on women that used him for a trainer. She even verified that he had an opening because of a dropout. Mark thought that dropout had to be me. Damn, Sarah already called Tony to tell him what happened and to warn him to be ultra careful. The funny thing, though, as he sat there feeling lower than dirt was the humor in what Brenda had said he didn't know or care how much she actually weighed. She was hot, just like she was. She didn't need to lose in anywhere. Mark smiled at her and told her she was too funny and that he thought she was perfect the way she was, so she better stay away from Tony. He said no one could have a more perfect body than you do. Brenda. Brenda flashed him the most beautiful smile and said, Thank you, kind sir. Your flattery makes me blush honestly, Mark. You were such a hunk. I can't understand why your wife would have looked elsewhere. Any girl would be lucky to have you as a friend and lover. Mark smiled himself well. Brenda, two years ago, I wasn't a hunk, as as you put it, but it still doesn't justify her cheating on me. I thank you for your help, and I would love to stay and talk, but I think I'd better get home. I really appreciate what you have done for me, both to find out the information about Tony and to boost my deflated ego, too. Thanks, Mark went home, and because it was late, he just went A-B bed. As he crawled into bed, he looked across at Sarah and was hit with a feeling of loss and disappointment. He didn't think he had ever been this low in his life but he was also certain that before it was all over, he would feel even worse. Worse. Sarah had awakened slightly when he crawled in and said, I love you. Mark Mark just grunted at that and turned away from her and tried to sleep. Of course, he couldn't get to sleep right away and just lay there thinking for quite a while he was certain that he heard a sob or two from Sarah. But she obviously had calmed down somewhat in the morning he woke up and Sarah was spooned against him. He could feel her body pressing into his back, and it made his morning would even stiffer when she realized that Mark had woken up. She reached around him and put her hand on a stiff tool. Mark, please forgive me for what I said and make love to me. Mark knew he was a goner. If he stayed in that bed, he never could resist Sarah, and he just knew that he would give in if he stayed there, and she worked her magic on him. His resolve held, and he said no. Sarah. I need to get going this morning, and there isn't time. Furthermore, I told you that you were cut off, and that is how it is going to be. So don't try that again. Mark got out of bed, showered, and left for work, Sarah said to herself. Mark, I know I deserve this for.
I said, but it hurts too much when Mark got to work. He mentioned to his boss that he was having a bit of a problem at home. He briefly explained it to his boss and was told to take any time off he needed to follow through on his suspicions. His boss also gave Mark the name of a top-notch electronics distributor that could hook him up with some surveillance equipment. He thanked his boss for the concern and help he told him that he would be taking off after lunch and would be off the rest of the week, Wednesday through Friday. His boss smiled at him because he knew exactly what Mark was going to do, and he wished him good luck. Mark went to the electronics distributor's location and found out that his boss had called ahead and told them to take care of him with whatever he needed. He didn't think he could handle any visual evidence, but doing some recording was something he could handle. He got three top-of-the-line bugs with battery life sufficient to transmit many hours of activity to a receiver within a couple of city blocks when the operator downloaded the data. When Mark got home, his dinner was on the table, and it was something special, his favorite lasagna with garlic bread and sweet, green peas. He thanked Sarah for the wonderful meal and excused himself to go and watch some television. Sarah cleaned up the kitchen and joined him in the TV room, but she was smart enough to not pushing too close to him at bedtime. Sarah headed to their bedroom, and Mark took the opportunity to plant one of the bugs inside their home phone. It would give him a full record of every conversation had on that phone. Both parties in the conversation would be heard. He was a bit nervous about trying to get the bug into Sarah's cell phone, but figured, F what the hell, just do it and don't worry about it. It was only a few minutes, and he was done now. He knew he had a source of information from either phone. The tough part was going to be getting a bug into Tony's phone. Mark probably didn't need to hear any of Tony's conversations with Sarah because he already had her phones bugged, but in case she was smart enough to not use her own and went to a payphone or something, he thought he would try to bug Tony's phone. Mark remembered that Tony worked with this well-built blonde woman on Wednesday mornings and usually hovered over her like a hawk. The whole, whole time she was in the gym, that son of a witch was getting himself all worked up over that blonde, then sneaking off to screw my wife Mark, thought I need to get a bug on his phone, and that is just the time I will be able to sneak in there and do it. He will have his nose so far up or crotch he won't recognize anything else for an hour. He went to the gym and saw Tony's phone sitting on his towel about ten feet from where Tony was sniffing the blonde. He knew it would be risky to get the phone, but again he said, what the hell do I have to lose? He snuck in and slipped the phone in his pocket, E.T., and backed out of the gym and went into the men's room. There he was able to easily insert the bug in Tony's phone. The tricky part was going to be getting the phone back on the towel when he got back to the gym. He could see that Tony was starting to wrap it up with the blonde he knew that he would never make it to the towel and back without being spotted. Damn, he thought, how am I going to do this? After a few seconds, he decided to just try to slide the phone across the floor to the towel and hope he got it close enough so Tony wouldn't be suspicious. It was all a bit of a risk, but he took it and slid the phone. It made some noise, but Tony was so engrossed in the blonde that he never noticed. Luckily, he slid it hard enough so that it got all the way to the towel, and in fact, it hit the towel hard enough that the leading edge slid under it was perfect. Mark thought there was no way Tony could be suspicious now, so he backed out of the gym and got out of there as quickly as he could. At precisely 10.55 a.m., his cell phone rang. It was Sarah. She told him she just wanted to touch bases with him before he went into his meeting. Of course, Mark never told her he was off from work the rest of the week, and certainly not that he was skipping the meeting after about ten minutes. Mark started to monitor the bugs using the receiver from his car. Tony's phone rang, and he picked up quickly. Tony said, Hi, Sarah. How you doing, baby? Do you want to meet me at my house like usual? I thought you were going to be more careful since Mark was suspicious. Sarah said, I do need to be more careful, Tony, because Mark is really suspicious now. I think we're going to have to quit meeting at least for a while. If he finds out about us, he is going to kill you and throw me out. I can't afford to have that happen, Tony. I love having sex with you, but I love Mark and don't want to lose him, Tony grumbled. But how can you give up my great tool, Sarah? I know you love it and have enjoyed it all this time. It is why you cut him off in the first place, so you could enjoy it more with me. So how can you give it up? Mark groaned as he heard Sarah's response. You write the first time you had sex with me. I knew I would do anything to have you more for those first three months. It wasn't enough. So I did cut Mark off and come to you more. I do love you, but I can't take the chance right now. Maybe in a few weeks, things will settle down and we can resume our weekly sex fest. But until then, you will have to do it with one of your other girlfriends, Tony responded. 
A Sarah, don't be jealous of my other girl fry I have. Never let them get in the way of our weekly fun. Have I? Do you think we can still get together on the Fridays that he goes golfing? She said, I am not jealous. I know you need more than I give you, so I haven't cared what you do when I am not with you. Besides, I, you screw Mark on those special days and you have never complained. I will have to think about the Fridays a bit. Maybe that will work out. I will let you know if I think I can pull it off. Mark had heard enough. It made him sick to his stomach. But it also angered him to the point that he knew he was going to get his revenge, that which had been screwing Tony since before he went on the diet, and she even used the diet to cut him off so her times with Tony would be more exciting for her. She had been screwing him every Wednesday and on the Fridays once a month when he golfed. She probably had screwed him more than a hundred times in the last two and a two years. How could she say she loved him when she could so easily go out and do what she had? He even wondered now if there had been others she screwed, it really didn't matter anymore because Tony alone was enough to end their marriage. He would get his revenge on both of them. Over the next two days, Mark made his plans and made a few contacts to make sure the ball was rolling good in his court. By the weekend, he monitored the phone taps. Both days, Sarah had called her beauty Thursday morning to set up an appointment ointment for Friday morning. It was a very interesting conversation. Janine, I need a killer new hairstyle. I want something youngish looking and very sexy. Why, Sarah, you going after another man? No, just trying to keep the one I have, Mark, is suspicious about me cheating. And I need to get him thinking with his tool again. Instead of with his head, I'm going to buy some hot new lingerie, too, and see if I can totally distract him so his suspicions go away. So what are you going to do about Tony? You can't seriously give up that great sexy you have been telling me about. Well, I might not give it up totally, but I will for a while anyway, and then maybe not quite as often as it has been. They both laughed, and the rest of their conversation was of no consequence. Mark, of course, was devastated by all he heard. But by this time, his anger was driving him, and the hurt was buried deep down inside. Tony had called her on Friday when she hadn't called him well. Babe, you still want to hold off for a while, or do you want a taste of me? Tony... I want a bad, but I just can't take the risk of getting together with you for a while. Please be patient, and I promise we will get back together as soon as Mark gets off this kick with every conversation Mark's heart broke. More he couldn't comprehend how there could be any love in this relationship with Sarah. It was all selfishness on her part, and no concern for him, and certainly no respect he wondered where things had gone wrong. Well, his plans were in place, and he would get his revenge. Saturday after lunch, the doorbell rang and Sarah went to answer it. There was a beautiful girl standing there in a cover-up outfit and carrying a small bag. Hi, Sarah. I am Brenda, a friend of Mark's. He mentioned that it would be okay for me to spend a little time by your pool today. I hope I am not inconveniencing you, but I really would like to work on my tan. Sarah was at a loss for words, but said, Sure, come on in and I will show you out to the pool. Brenda noticed that Sarah wasn't smiling, though, and a slight smile slipped onto her own face. Sally and Linda rang the doorbell together a short time later. Sally told Sarah that she has worked with Mark for a few years, and Linda told her that she had waited on them as a couple, and on Mark alone at Grisham's. They both told Sarah that Mark had invited them to come and use the pool for the afternoon. They were both very attractive women, and Sarah began to wonder just what was up she felt that she'll go through her a couple of times. As she thought about possibilities, all three beauties staked out of Shay's lounge and started to spread suntan lotion on themselves. It didn't take them long to agree to do each other so as to not miss any spots. Once they were well oiled up, they lay on the Shays and started to soak in some sun. A short time later, they decided that an all-over tan would be better, and each untied the string on their bikini tops and dropped them on the towel beside the lounge. Sarah was pissed and really wanted to tell them all to please leave. But since Mark had invited them, she knew she had to tread lightly because she was already on thin ice with him. So she said nothing. At 3.30 p.m. Brenda walked over to Sarah and sat down in the chair opposite her, Sarah. I have to tell you something. I am a bartender at G. And when you dropped your ultimatum on Mark, he stopped in for a few bears that night. And frankly, he told me everything that had been going on with you two. Sarah looked startled, but Brenda continued. I think you made a big mistake. Sarah and I, for the life of me, don't understand how you could do what you did. 
Mark is suspicious of you now and doing a lot of digging to find out exactly what has happened. I think it only fair to warn you that Mark told Sally, Linda, and me that if he discovers you cheated on him in the past or cheat on him in the future, he is going to start screwing all of us for each time you, you cheated. Sarah's mouth dropped open and she started to say something, but Brenda cut her off. He also told us that he is going to have some questions for you. And if you lie to him, he is also going to be screwing one of us. Each time you lie, we all think Mark is quite a honk and would love to have him between our legs. Brenda knew that Mark was going to screw her because she knew already that Sarah cheated many times. And she knew with whom, too, she also knew Sarah would have to lie, hoping to keep her cheating a secret. So Mark was going to be a busy boy satisfying the three women Sally also walked over and sat down. I have known Mark for several years and always thought he was handsome and sweet. I know he had gained too much weight, but underneath was still the sweet guy he always had been, and I had a huge crush on him. I still do have a crush, but now there is even more. He is an absolute hunk since he lost the excess weight, and I know you two are having some trouble. I just want you to know that I never made a move on him before, but I am now he can have me anytime he wants. Sarah, of course, Linda was not to be left out. I had my eye on the two of you for a couple of years, and I always noticed how much he showed his love for you. I saw how he doted on you and that he was always kind and considerate of you many times. I thought how lucky you were to have such a man, and I wished I could be so lucky one day. In fact, I fantasized that it was me that Mark was with the guy lost 118B to make you happy and became a hunk in the process, and you do to him what you did. I know I would do almost anything to have a man like him in my bed, so be prepared moment later at precisely 400 p.m., as Mark had planned with the three women beforehand. He walked out through the patio doors onto the pool deck and smiled as he saw the four women there. Hi, Sarah. I see you have met my three friends, and I also see they have gotten some work in on their tant. I have to say this is the first time I have seen any of these beautiful bodies, though, and I am pleasantly surprised, ladies. I am afraid you're going to give me a hard time, Sarah. How come you don't have your top off? Don't you want to compete for my attention? Sarah was terribly upset with the events of the afternoon, but realized that she had better play along. She reluctantly untied her top and sloughed it off. Mark said, Sarah, I have a couple of questions for you and it is imperative that you answer them honestly at any time during our marriage. Have you cheated on me? Sarah answered, no, never. Mark Mark continued. Sarah, you were telling me that you have never cheated on me with Tony from the gym. Sarah again answered, no, Mark, I have never cheated on you with Tony or anyone else. Where did you get such an idea once again? Mark continued. So Sarah, you were telling me that you never cheated on me with Tony almost every Wednesday for more than two years. And on the Friday afternoons, I played golf with my brother and our friends. Sarah was shocked that Mark knew so much about her affair with Tony, but knew her only hope was to stick to her story in hopes that he didn't have any real evidence. So she replied, no, Mark. I don't know what you're talking about all the while. Each of the girls, Brenda, Sally, and Linda, sat there with the huge grins on their faces growing brighter with every answer. Sarah gave Mark they knew very well what was about to happen. Soon Mark said, Well, Sarah, it seems that you are not only a cheater, but also a liar. You know you have been screwing Tony almost every Wednesday from 11 a.m. until whenever, and I know it, I got a copy of your phone logs from both the landline and your cell phone, and I saw every call you made to me at 10.55 a.m., immediately followed by a call to Tony's cell phone at 11 a.m. I know it was Tony's phone because I had Brenda call the number and she was able to verify that it was Tony. I have no pictures of you two together because I didn't want to see that for the rest of my life. But Sarah, I know in my heart that a call to him every week wasn't innocent. So I don't need pictures. You are the only one who knows what happened. But I am convinced, regardless, Sarah was in shock, and it finally hit her hard that Mark knew everything, and she was in for a lot of hard times in their relationship. She started to say something to Mark, and he stopped her. Sarah, there is really not much to be said and nothing that would con convince me that you have not been cheating on me. You know how much I love you. But right now, my hurt, disgust, and anger are so much stronger than my love for you. I brought these three lovely ladies here today so you could see them in all their glory. I want to tell you a bit about each one of them, too. Sally, she has been an associate of mine at work for several years. She is such a beautiful girl and sweet as they come. We have worked well together all these years, and I have known for a long time that she had a crush on me. And as I got more buff, 
I saw changes in her that led me to believe she felt even more than a crush I never came on to her. And I know that even made her more attracted to me, believe me, Sally. I am very attracted to you as well, but never acted on that because I was married and loved my wife dearly. Sally smiled, knowing that she and Mark were truly friends and both enjoyed spending time together. Linda, I have known for a much shorter time, as I know she told you we only met when you and I would go to Grisham together and she would wait on us. I could tell she enjoyed seeing us together, and only recently did I know she fantasized about being with me instead of you being with me. She is a lovely girl, and I am flattered that she thinks that highly of me. The one thing I have to say further is, doesn't she have the most fantastic tits you have ever seen? I don't know if I have ever seen a more perfect pair of tits. I assure you I'm going to enjoy feasting on them. I have known Brenda the least amount of time of any of these three ladies I have seen her at Grisham for a while but never really had the chance to talk to her until you dropped your bomb on me that night. Brenda was a classic bartender and listened to my tale of woe like all bartenders do. But there was more I could see the compassion in her eyes. I saw pain on her face as I revealed my pain, and I saw anger that a woman could do what you did to the man who loved her. In a very short time, there was a connection with Brenda, and in fact, she helped me find out things I couldn't have gotten on my own. By this time, Sarah was on the verge of a total breakdown. Tears leaked from her eyes and her chest rose and fell quite rapidly with her exaggerated breathing. She had so much she wanted to tell Mark, but the words just wouldn't come, and she said nothing. I must say that I am really going to enjoy having sex with these three beautiful women making love to them, and yes, screwing them in every possible way, I, in all that they have all shown an interest in me and want to be with me, I in for one hell of a ride. Don't you think, Sarah, but Sarah, I promised you that I would not be unfaithful to you in our marriage. How am I going to screw these hot women if I am still married to you? I can't break my promise, I not built that way, so the only way is to not be married to you any longer. Brenda reached into her bag and pulled out divorce papers. Sarah, I a bartender at night, but I also have a day job. I a process server. You have been served. I admit it is the only time I have ever served anyone while topless, though she couldn't help herself. And she giggled with that comment Sarah couldn't hold on to her emotions anymore and burst into tears. Oh, Mark, please don't do this. I'm so sorry, so, so sorry I have hurt you. I will do anything to make it up to you. I love you and, and want to be with only you. Sarah Mark said, I am having a hard time believing that you really love me. Given what you have been doing for over two years, it wasn't a couple of times, Sarah. I'm sure it has been more than 100 times you cheated with Tony, and I'm not sure if there were others or not, but I assure you it really makes no difference to me if there were the court hearing is scheduled for next week Friday. And after we are legally separated, I'm going to start seeing each of these ladies. Maybe after a while, I will be so engrossed in the enjoyment and duality of banging each of them that I will be able to forgive you for what you have done with Tony. Maybe I will even understand the pleasures that you apparently got from your illicit affair. Maybe a lasting relationship will develop with one of these ladies, and I will find the love and support I thought I had with you if that happens. Perhaps I will be able to stop loving you, and over time, perhaps I can forget you. I hope so. Sarah, I really do. Mark told the ladies it was time for them to leave and that he would call each of them. He went into the house to pack a few things to hold them over, while stayed at a hotel until Friday when either he or Sarah would officially move out, unable to do anything coherent. Sarah just continued to sit beside the pool, crying softly now. Mark walked out of the patio doors and set his suitcases down, then walked over to Sarah. She didn't know what more there was for him to say, but it became clear in an instant. Sarah, remember what I told you would happen to your lover. It just so happens that yesterday when you apparently canceled out on Tony, he decided to go for the big busted blonde that he works with every Wednesday morning from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Yes, she was his warm-up girl for you, Sarah. It is what got him hot before the two of you got together. He always had his nose so far up or crotch that by the time he got to you, he was really ready to go. I can only imagine how Brenda, Sally, and Linda will get me worked up. I hope it makes me a sexual dynamo for them, 
And by the way, the blonde was Gina Margarella, the wife of Gino Margarella. It seems that Gino took exception to Tony banging his wife, and he and a couple of his goons worked Tony over pretty good. I think his face is a mess, a few teeth still remain, but not many, and a few of his ribs are broken too, and Gino was so appreciative that I filled him in on what was going on, that he allowed me to be the one to kick Tony's balls up into his body, I think he won't be producing any more of the hot semen. In fact, I would be surprised if he ever was able to have sex again and never fear Sarah. I, of course, will deny having any involvement in what happened to Tony, and of course, Friday was my golf day, and my brother and friends will be a perfect alibi, have a great life. Sarah, I will see you in court next Friday. Sarah was left crying that day. She was all alone, and within the next two hours, her bags were packed, and she was shipped to her mother. It took seven months to get them officially divorced. Sarah was devastated and went into deep depression. And Mark, well, he never did what he told he would do with the other ladies. He never intended to do. That he got himself two golder retrievers found unconditional true love in the end. 